Greetings friends. Welcome to Sovereign Grace Doctrine. I do thank you for taking time in your busy day to watch our videos, and pray our studies in the Word of God, studies in the history of faith, be a blessing to those who follow along. Friends, we continue to have opportunities to bear witness to a great many people in and through the medium and the internet as great multitudes do look our way for the preaching and teaching of the Word of God. And we do pray for all. The God would have mercy, bless with salvation in your midst, help with thy needs, and the Lord would help us to be a blessing unto all we can. Also, locally, there's still those calling upon us to preach unto them the Word of God, and we're thankful for that too. We do desire your prayers. That God will continue to use us to be a blessing unto all that we can to preach the truth to this lost and dying world, set the gospel before this world. People might hear and believe and to the saving of their souls. Friends, we continue to study the book of 1 Corinthians here. Chapter 14 again here. We pick up with verse 1, reading down. It says here again, Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. But he that prophesieth edifieth the church. I would that ye all spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you? Except I shall speak to you either by revelation, or by knowledge, or by prophesying, or by doctrine. And even things without life-giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harped? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? So likewise ye except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak unto the air. Paul has committed by the leadership of the Holy Spirit of God such a great section of testimony and teaching to the regards of gifts and especially the speaking in tongues through three chapters here. And I would that all might hear and understand that Paul is declaring that the speaking in tongues is not what people make it out to be. It's not the great thing that ought to be desired for a sign unto others of your salvation. For it is a personal, private thing that even as he says up here that you would speak unto God if no one can understand what you're saying. And that you edify yourself and not the church. And that he would rather that you prophesy. Oh, that we would understand this. These that make such a big to-do over it in the world today are emphasizing the wrong thing. It's all about self-gratification, self-fulfillment, fulfilling yourself is what they're really teaching. As so many today are, are teaching a self-centered religion where it is not for God nor for the glorifying and edifying of the Lord and the edifying of the church, that is. He again here said in verse 4, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. And all that we do together as the Lord's people ought to be for the edification of the church that we are part of. He says, I would that ye all spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied, for greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. Do you see that? Do you understand what he just said? 
the great emphasis that some placed upon tongues, all that they would realize, <coughs> even as Paul said here, he that prophesieth is greater than he that speaketh with tongues. Tongues is not the great thing to be desired. The ability to prophesy and to speak of the things of God to the edifying of the church is far greater than to speak in tongues. We were warned above. Prophecies would fail. Tongues would cease. Knowledge would vanish away. Hope, charity, faith are the things that now abide. Charity or love being the greatest of those three. Our words should speak of our faith. Our words should speak of the hope that's within us. And with the love of God that we have received, we ought to have that same love toward all. That we'd bear witness of the truth that we would, well, in their days they had to prophesy. They had to speak of things yet to come because they did not yet have the complete, perfect word of God. Prophecy was far more beneficial in those days. Old Testament scriptures, yes, in hand, that some could read and understand. But as far as the current situation that had developed and the fulfillment of all those things, and now as they were in a new age, under a new covenant with better promises, that was now being revealed and the writings being set forth that they might hear and learn and know what God had done how through Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, he had fulfilled all things and assured the salvation not only of Jews, but also of Gentiles that believe upon him. And that the institution of the local visible church is now that place wherein that Jesus Christ himself, the Son of God, meets with us as we come together in his name to worship the living God no longer in the temple where the veil was rent. God leaving out from it. He rather that they would speak in he'd rather they prophesy than speak in tongues, where it's far greater blessing, a far greater it, 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 it edifies the church. Or the tongues don't. Speaking in tongues does not edify the church. Especially when it is something that is not understood. And the one doing the tongues, speaking in the so-called tongues, is not to be the one to interpret. It's to be a second person. He will show us down here. For the interpretation of tongues also is a part of it. Part of the gifts. But he says, Now, brethren, I, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you except I shall speak to you either by? And he lists four things here. And it's very important we consider what he's saying. That the one who speaks in tongues is not, it does not profit the body, it does not profit the local church, it does not profit those that are saved, it does not profit those that are lost. It's between you and God until someone interprets, some other person stands up and says, that's what that means. And then it edifies the church. Those tongues have ceased. That type of gift. It's no longer necessary. The prophecy, the prophesying of things to come is all fulfilled and final prophecies are given in the book of Revelation. No more is to be added to it. The Word of God is complete, and we have it, and we can hold it in our hands. We can look herein and read the Word of God. We can study herein and learn what thus saith the Lord. We can see all the prophecies of the Old Testament. We can see how God hath created all things from the very beginning, and how God hath fulfilled all those things in through Jesus Christ. In him is our salvation, not in any other, not in any other name, not in the Hebrew language, not in any Hebrew name. I grow weary of these deceivers out there who are deceiving so many, who are telling you that you have to go back to the Hebrew for the word of God. 
God gave every group of people their language. To the people that would be called the Hebrew people, the Jews, he gave them their language just as he gave every other nation out there their language. And it pleased God to use them as the oracles of God. They themselves are not the important thing. They, are, they were nothing. God took a people that were not a people. He made a great nation of them. He used them for his glory and honor. And he was not well pleased with all of them. But there was a remnant according to the election of grace. They were the oracles of the word of God. They were the keepers of it. They preserved it. They brought it down to these days and they still have and still are. Preserving that Old Testament text. The New Testament text bears witness of the fulfillment of the Old Testament text. And as the scriptures say, it is a better covenant with better promises. There's no need for sacrifice anymore. There is no, there remaineth no more sacrifice, even the scripture says, for sin. Jesus has paid it all. This we understand. And he has sent his ministers unto us to proclaim the word of God, preachers and pastors of the word of God, evangelists even. And except they shall speak to us by revelation, or by knowledge, or by prophesying, or by doctrine, what shall it profit us, brethren, friends, what shall it profit us if one comes unto us speaking in a tongue we don't understand? There are a great many of you out there in many parts of the world, especially all over Africa, that have extended an invitation unto me to come unto you and preach to you. Brethren, I, dis I discern this, that many of you out there do not speak English in many of these parts of the world wherein you've asked us to come. Kenya, Uganda, uh, other provinces of Africa, other nations. Yes, you need people to come unto you speaking in your language that you might understand what is said and that you might grow thereby. Some of you can understand the English. You can read it. And we are here by this means of the internet to be a blessing unto all that we can, to reach all that we can out here in the world, to set before, them, for, uh, to set before this world sound doctrine, setting forth the gospel, according to the scriptures, not according to men. And by these things that he here speaks of, that these are the things now, that, as he says here, and these some of these apply more in their day than they do now, by revelation. Except, and this, we start with these four here, it is, except I speak to you either by revelation, knowledge, prophecy, or doctrine. By revelation. Proclaiming the word of God and Helping to re God using us to reveal unto you the text, the Word of God, and what it says and what it means therein by what we speak through video, what we put forth in the uh, written statements through Facebook and other uh, other media such as uh, Gab. Videos are on YouTube and Odyssey, and the written stuff on uh, Facebook and Gab. The revelation, that revelation that God giving us understanding of his word that we might reveal it unto you and set it before you in the preaching and teaching thereof, that by revelation of God's holy word you might be made, it might be known unto you that you're sinners, that you're condemned under God's word and his law, that you're already condemned because you're sinners, we're transgressors of the law, and the law was given not to save us, but the law was given that it might magnify sin and it might cause us to see the exceeding sinfulness of sin and that it might bring us unto Christ. That we would look to Jesus Christ for our salvation and not to any other. There is none other name given whereby we must be saved and God hath given him a name above every name. And I say to you this, friends, anyone that comes to you and says, oh, you've got to believe in a Hebrew name, is a deceiver and a liar. You've got to believe in Jesus. Isus, I believe, is perhaps how it's pronounced in the Greek. 
You can pronounce it in the Greek. You can pronounce it in any language like it is said, but it is Jesus. It is not a Hebrew name. It is not Joseph. It's not Jehovah. It is not Yeshua or Yahweh or any of these Y words which in the last hundred years have been passed around and began to be proclaimed. These are all deceptions and lies, but only in the name of Jesus. Only in and through the only begotten Son of God can we come unto the Father. That is what is declared unto us by the revelation of God that we cannot get to, the, to God the Father but by the Son. And I don't care who you are, I don't care what nation you're of, or what your thinking is, what religion you're of, you can be a Gentile of any group, you can be a Jew. And as long as you continue to deny Jesus Christ and refuse to accept Him as God's only begotten Son, as God, as your Redeemer, as your Savior, as your Lord, as long as you refuse these things, the revelation which you have is flawed. That which you would say before others is flawed, it's deceptive. You're have been lied to, you believed lies, and you are promoting lies. You are the blind leading the blind if you have not received Christ and bearing witness of Him. That knowledge that He speaks of next, by knowledge. The knowledge which we have is by the Holy Word of God, and we find from beginning to end here it all points us to Jesus Christ. The Old Testament speaks of the Savior, the anointed one that should come, the Christ, the Messiah. It does not name him by name, but it describes the details of his coming into this world, of his birth, of his life, uh, of how he would be dealt with, how he would act, how he would be treated, how he would suffer and die, have his agony, and of his death, burial, and resurrection of his eternal kingdom which God hath established. That knowledge of God which comes from the Holy Word of God. And yes, it's in more than just this book. This here authorized King James Version is the only English Bible that is unadulterated, unperverted, without error. It is the preserved, inspired Word of God under the English-speaking and hearing people. It's also the Word of God of the Old Testament still in the Hebrew. Word of God in the New Testament is still in the Greek. And those two covenants, those two testaments, have been translated into many of the ancient languages. At least seven or more. More than seven. And of many other languages in the world today. It is in Russian, Latin still, yes, the old Latin, not the Vulgate. But the Latin, German, and old languages, the Gothic, many old languages. But yet it is said there of the thousands of languages in the world today that there are still many that do not have the Word of God in their language. But the English, the English language is the most commonly used language in the world since the 1500s. You know, the knowledge which we understand this, there are those who make a big deal about, well, the name Jesus didn't exist before the 1500s. Well, that's because there was no English language before the 1500s. And that language coming into existence and it becoming the prominent, dominant language of the common people. And it has always been God's will that the common people might receive the Word of God. It's not just for the ruling class. It's not just for the kings and the priests. It's for the people. That the people might know what thus saith the Lord. The knowledge thereof is not kept back from the people as certain men and religions have tried to do with it. Catholicism did all they could to try to keep the 
Word of God in ancient and dead languages, yes, the Hebrew, the Greek, the Latin, which were all dead languages, and they did all they could to try to keep it there so that the world would not have the Word of God. That's the work of the devil. Some of you out there being so deceived that you have been made to believe that the church is Catholic, that it's universal. That it is of this man-made organization, which is Catholicism. Roman Catholicism is a man-made organization. It is the seat of the devil. It's the religion of the Satan. And you'd best flee from it, friends. you best understand this. It is set itself in array against God and all his saints. The blood of the saints are upon their hands, and they oppose the truth everywhere they can. They are not the church of the Lord. Knowledge is something they have forbidden the world to have. They made laws to keep the English-speaking people from having the Word of God in their language. They forbid the translation of it into the English. They made laws and put to death those that were doing it. And then they also began to put to death those that were reading it in the English. Just as they did many hundreds of years prior to that when the old Latin language was so dominant and blessed of God, they asked of Jerome, make us a new translation. Make us, and he gave them that Latin Vulgate wherein he vulgar, he, 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 he changed it. He did not, did not honestly pin it over. He corrupted it. And they began to burn the old Latin manuscripts. They began to kill those that refused to give up those Latin manuscripts. They made laws against the original Latin. They didn't care about the Greek. They didn't want it either. They tried to make all their people, all the religious people of the world use the Greek or not the Greek but the Latin, that new Latin Vulgate but the Orthodox said no we will not give up our Greek manuscripts God put that determination in their hearts and minds and their understanding know that the knowledge of God was there in the Greek text the knowledge of the Christ of Jesus of Nazareth was there in the Greek text and only those that deny Christ set themselves against it. As many unbelieving Jewish scholars did. They set themselves in array against that knowledge. And they did not want to proclaim it. And they began to take it out of the manuscripts and rewrite them. And that's why there are some critical texts which are different from the vast majority of the text. Because there were those that refused to believe upon Jesus Christ who were copying the text, and they changed it. And from that we go to prophecy. Prophecy, which was foretelling in those days of things that were going to come upon them in the near future, such as famines and death and land. And these things did happen. We've spoken of the examples that are given to us, especially in the book of Acts, of those that came forth prophesying of a famine in the near future and how that many would die for lack of food. History bears witness that this did come to pass. And then doctrine. Doctrine is simply this. It's teach, teaching God's word. Many of you out there in the world are ignorant of what that word means. Even here in these United States, there are many that are ignorant of what doctrine is. It's teaching. I uh, remember of times in the past where there were those that uh, were heard to say that our church doesn't preach doctrine or anything. We just cheat. We just, they, they turn around and say, we just preach the gospel. They just teach the word of God contradicting themselves, not understanding the word doctrine means teaching. We are to 
not only preach the gospel, my friends, but we're to teach the all things of God. And not the traditions of men, either. That's another great fault with Roman Catholicism. They put their traditions on equal plane with the Word of God, yea, even they bring it up higher. Casting aside what the Word of God says for tradition. And they've gone so far, or they've come so far, that they cannot discern the difference anymore between what tradition is and what the Word of God is. Because this, they know not the truth. They preach lies, they teach lies, and so do many others who contradict what the Scriptures say and how we're to live. Friends, we're to teach the Word of God to the people that they can know what the Word of God teaches them. The institution of church is to be the pillar and the ground of the truth. It's a local visible institution where God's people are to come together to be taught the Word of God that we might grow in the grace and knowledge therein and be a comfort and a strength one to another to edify and encourage, build up one another in faith. We are going to be opposed out here in the world and we are opposed by the world. The world is full of wickedness and ungodly people who do not want to come to the light. They do not want to accept what thus saith the Lord. They do not want to believe the word of God. Those that are saved are the only ones that will sit down desiring to hear, desiring to be taught the things of God when all others round about us will flee from it and say, no, we will not conform to that. We'll not hear that. They'll fight against it all they can. Because they refuse to believe what thus saith the Lord. They refuse to believe that they are sinners. They refuse to believe that they are ungodly people with hearts that are desperately wicked. The man in his lost done condition is a wretched creature who cannot save himself. We are not our own, we that are saved. We understand this, that we are not our own. We've been bought with a price. And because we are the Lord's, we are expected to live for Him and to glorify Him, to exalt Him, to declare Him unto this lost and dying world to say that we are the sons of God. That we have been saved by the grace of God and that we have a Savior. We have a Sovereign. The blessed, the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, which is Jesus the Christ. There is none other that you can be saved by. In all other ways, all other religions, my friends, are lies and deceptions of the devil to deceive you and to lead you into hell itself. Only by Christ Jesus. Yes, you must become a Christian. You must believe upon Jesus Christ as the only means of your salvation. Know this, that it's sure and steadfast. He is an anchor that keeps the soul, and you cannot be lost to Him once you've been saved. Friends, we're out of time. And I do pray for the great multitudes that are out there that have looked unto us. I hope you all understand that. The few of you that hear this can pass it on. That we do pray for all that are out there that have followed us and subscribing. And we pray God have mercy upon you and those in your midst. He might save and they might establish churches that will stand for the truth. May God keep you all.